Hello guys, welcome back to the Meteor Nights. My name is Ari. And I'm Denise. And today we're going to be watching House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 3. Very excited for this episode. Been waiting a whole week again. It feels like forever. Every time one of these episodes drops, it's like, oh my god, I need you guys <laughs> to start dropping them. And we can just all binge them because I cannot wait. The previous episode ended up, again, in a similar tone. It was very devastating to see, you know, the, both of the twins yeah. having to go at it. I thought the sequence was incredible. It was so tense. Even the audience was fooled. We didn't know who was who and who was, you know, the, the infiltrator. And I thought the tension in that scene was so well executed. Something about this season so far, they know how to, I guess, ramp up the tension. And I think that really helps pacing. Yeah, absolutely. The The tension has just been growing, not only just within the episode, but also from the first episode to this one. The stakes are feeling worse and worse for all of us. It becomes more and more excruciating to watch where all of this is going to go. You know, Damon just took off. We have no idea what he's going to do. Like, it's probably not going to be a, a healthy coping mechanism <laughs> if we know anything about him. He's probably going to do some something very very crazy and it's gonna be it's gonna be bad i'm expecting something like a he can keep his tongue moment <laughs> I guess we'll see. Hopefully, I mean, we get a badass Damon moment, but yes. yeah, I think uh, I wasn't too happy with how he reacted when he heard the news. I was hoping that he would be a bit more remorseful or be like, you know, I messed up. That was not the point, but he was kind of, you know, nonchalant about yeah. it. And that's uh, that just does not make him look good at all. So no. I don't know, man, very conflicting feelings with these characters. But again, none of these people are good people. We have to remember that, you know, both teams have shitty people on them. And uh, <laughs> I'm here for the ride, man. I'm here yes. for the for the juicy stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to catch the full length reactions alongside us with your own copy, that's going to be available on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We hope that you enjoy and we'll catch you guys after the show. All right, who's going to die this episode? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, boys. Oh, man. Like, this is one of those intros that I will never skip ever. Actually, the HBO intros are really good. Yeah. Because I remember we felt the same way about The Last of Us. Oh, yeah. I think just when you have a banging score, it's so hard to just yes. bypass that because the music <laughs> is so, so well done in these shows. Also, I believe it's actually the same company that does these... Uh, Intros, yes. the animations. Uh, the same company did The Last of Us. They did Daredevil. Yeah. I love that. The throne mm -hmm. and it's all just tainted in blood. Oh, 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 oh shit. Oh. Now we understand. <laughs> that was now so we get up. it. That poor child, man. <laughs> Can you even get that thing up? Well enough for killing Blackwoods. <laughs> Bracken! Oh, killing Ooh. Blackwoods. Bracken is in trouble. Just rolled their way over so Bracken cows can fill their bellies on Blackwood grass. The Assize. Mm. The Assize. Q, this is our land. Ooh, Ooh, we got a little dispute. It's Bracken land. Ooh, oh, he didn't like that one. Your false queen Rhaenyra is a kinslayer. Your uncle declared for Aegon. Oh, the rupture. Aegon Targaryen is no true king. Oh, God. You're both craven, little. All right, that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his sword's out. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Do not dare him. He's got a sword in his yeah. hand, man. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> what a transition. Wow. That's, that's so a, bleak. That's a massive battle. It's so interesting that they're now choosing in this season that they're choosing to show us what's happening amongst the people, right? Not just amongst the leaders. Look at that! It's a lot of death. That's a- oh god. It's a massacre, man. I cannot fault him for keeping his oath. What of those who sent him? Hmm. She needs to find a way to speak to Alicent. They need to clear this whole thing up, but I don't think that's gonna happen, is it? No, I think it's too late for that. Otto Hightower would never have allowed this. She knows. Wow. Oh, I love her. She's so intelligent. Soon they will not even remember what it was that began the war in the first place. What a great line. Wow. Usurped my throne. Or was it when the child was beheaded? Or when Aemon killed Luke? Or when Luke took Aemon's eye? So many things that stack yeah. up. There may be another way. Okay, let's hear it. Alison Hightower. Yes, yes, you need to speak with her. She came to me in the hours after your Lord Father's death. She knows war is coming and that it'll be savage beyond all compare. Right. She was locked up. She sent a raven. I do not care to read her message. Oh, you have to read it. Not her, but the men around her who seek bloodshed. She permitted it. Did she, though? No, Rhaenyra, same As thing you with you. committed the murder of a little boy in his bed. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's the people around them that are messing up. Alicent is in King's Landing. Her son sits my throne. There is nothing more to be said. Uh, 
kind of got you there. Ugh. Ugh. Lord Crispin. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised Allison wasn't down there. Anyway. <laughs> you do well, Lord Hand. <laughs> Lord Hand. I was waiting, you know, I was waiting for something redeeming about him, but I just cannot find it. I love to hate him, though. The actor's oh, doing yeah. great. He's such a sweetheart in real life. A hundred percent. A hard job to be such a jerk. <laughs> <Yes>. Constantly. <laughs> They're like, ugh, oh, the boss is here again. <laughs> He's got the power now, man. He went from a nobody to the hand. Been tidings and <laughs> <laughs> Yep. That gay says it all, uh, doesn't it? Good morrow, your grace. My lord. Mm-hmm. Good morrow indeed. Sub B. You've appointed new knights to the King's Guard, your grace. To replace those we lost. The last one needlessly, some might say. <laughs> <laughs> Arik was awarded the great duty of ending Rhaenyra's challenge. He failed to discharge it. He failed because the scheme was rash. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And in our castles waiting for war to come to us. As now it surely will. Ooh, trouble in paradise. House Bracken took it upon themselves to attack the Blackwoods. We declared for the Pretender. First blood in our name. Both sides took heavy losses, Your Grace. I'm not entirely certain we can declare this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is not a win. Call it what you will. I call it war, and so will Dragonstone. Oh, good lord. What are we going to do about it? Well... <laughs> Send a raven to Lord Tully. He must control them. Lord Grover Tully is a flaccid old fool. I couldn't control us. Gonna cut him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like begging your pardon, your grace. Had to be said. <laughs> Strike as one. <laughs> ah, the great military mind of the Citadel. Do I remind me which link in your chain to know- Dude, they're fighting amongst themselves. Dude. I will ride out with those I can muster here, or I will enlist the Brackens, subdue the Riverlands, and take Harrenhal. Hopefully you don't fail again. But bold scheme indeed. Well, the gods favor the bold. They did not favor Sir Eric. Exactly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Damn. You, my king. Wow. That's just foolish, man. Vagar will remain here to defend the city. To war, then. So lackadaisical. That is precisely why you must remain, brother. It's a brave thought. We cannot risk your loss. I'm as fearsome as any of them. Right. Yes, you are. Amon seems like he's the only one that has a good head on his shoulder <laughs> in terms of strategy. Right, at least somewhat reasonable, you know? Yes. I was told you turned back from your ship to bring warning. Okay, so it was her. You saved my life. You wish to be rewarded. As I would think, you would wish to reward me. I love how honest <laughs> she is. What price would you set? A place at your court. Uh, oh, that's a surprise. You said your earnest desire was to flee Westeros. Right. And you let me go. You showed me grace when you could have withheld it. She wants to be loyal to her. She earned her respect. I would punish the High Towers for what they have done. To me, to those who served me. But more than that, they will be ruled either by you or by the usurper. Yeah, exactly. That's true. She cares for the people as mm -hmm. well. Sea Smoke has grown restless of late. Maybe he's lonely. Restless of late. Hmm. I wonder what that means. Write to Prince Reggio if he will have you and go to him. I'm sorry to put this upon you, but you have seen what may befall them here. Yeah. Yeah, they already infiltrated once. Teach them, train them. And my sister, I need Bela here because she has a dragon. Oh. Make this sacrifice willingly for all of us. She feels like she's not worthy because she doesn't have a dragon. Damn. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. There's Damon. I love the design of his dragon, man. So unique. I know. What are you up to, man? <laughs> hey, dude, shout out to the cinematographers this season. They've been killing it. The way they set the mood. Look at this. The, way the POV. Is shot. Hell yeah. It's amazing. Imagine how all of them are shitting their pants right about now. They're like, Dragon! <laughs> Dude, if Which I side if it's, is it on? If I saw one of them, I would also be shitting my pants. The Ooh, Rogue uh, Prince. Love that armor. Yeah, you go by yourself into enemy grounds. That sounds like a very Damon thing to do, to be fair. <laughs> yes, Whoa. love the atmosphere. This is creepy as hell. <laughs> it's like the silence is too loud. The sound design is great. Are we doing hallucinations now? <laughs> oh. 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 
Oh. Damn. Guess he did not halt. KO. Oh, oh God. Oh. I'm claiming Aaron Hall. Just like that. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> Gotta love Damon for his audacity. I, Sir Simon Strong, Castellan of Aaron Hall, pledge fealty to Rhaenyra. He's a strong. Supper is venison with black cabbage and peas. No red currant. Sorry about that. Aww. Interesting. He was expecting a fight and he's like, yeah, yeah, we'll pledge. Whatever, man. What else can we do? <laughs> That's so real. <laughs> it's like I'm done with the drama. Just keep me out of it. <laughs> I've survived many a battle. I do not mean to be felled by poison peas. <laughs> I'll admit that my cook's peas aren't exactly the stuff of legend, but poison? <laughs> well, it's an easy way to kill a dragon rider. Mm, that's gonna come in handy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you not think it's strange that his father perished by fire mm -hmm. and his son too here in this damp place? Right, what are the odds? Even in summer we struggle to light the hearths. So no, you will find no loyalty to Laris Strong here. Yeah, he knows it was no mm -hmm. accident. It's too obvious. That was a horrible sequence too, the way that they was died. terrible. I'd only assumed that as consul... Then we are reminded of the perilousness of assumption. Indeed. <laughs> oh, Damon. Is also in something of a state of disrepair, since your forebear incinerated much of it with his dragon. Well, that is precisely why we must bring it into a state of repair. <laughs> <laughs> That's the coin, my prince. Your grace. Your grace. There you go. Houses Bracken and Blackwood have long detested one another. Why? Oh, well. <laughs> time to update you, man. <laughs> the answer to that is lost in time. Just like Rainey said. <laughs> exactly. Sin begets sin. Get sin. It's a cycle of violence. Just keeps going. So you forget where it started. His grip on his bannerman is weak. They feel they can do as they please. I will speak with him nonetheless. People should obey their liege lord, whatever his condition. Oh. Oh man. Great performance right there yeah. from Matt Smith. You know he was thinking about Viserys. That brief little moment in his eyes. What then? We march on King's Landing and take the throne. The throne? Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you don't say. Chair made of swords. Yes. Yeah, no, we know exactly yes. what you meant. It's just, you know, it's kind of audacious to just say it like that. What a great sequence. We also got some, uh, a bit more lore about this specific place. Yeah. And how it's going to come into use. Your host is mustered and ready to march. What did he do to his hair? My God, he looks even more dopey now. How exhilarating to arrive at court after three long months on the road. Find my lord father, who served three kings faithfully. Uh oh, damn. Unseated his hand of the king. Mm, yeah, <laughs> and you're the hated replacement. And from such modest beginnings. Mm. Gotta love the brother-in-law. Oh, God. Sir Gwen has volunteered to accompany you into battle. <laughs> that should be interesting. <laughs> a full compliment, your grace. Then you should have a fuller one. That's what you get for mm -hmm. trying to bypass her. No one is more delighted than I to march out to war with the Dornishman, sister. Oh, I'm gonna love this new dynamic. Yeah, I know. Oh boy. Need someone to keep him on a leash. May the seven guide you. Good night. I thank your grace for her prayers. Brr. That her Lord Commander may go into battle with her blessings in his heart. Your grace. Oh dear. Mm. Some tensions there. I mean, he kind of deserves it. She was trying to prove a point and tell her piece, and he was like, nope, let's just go into the attack. Yeah, exactly. Her, I just feel bad because Allison's advice just gets ignored left and right. Like, some of the things that she's saying actually make sense. It's not like she's an idiot. Whoa. My goodness. I know I've been saying it, but the scale is just, it's great to see, yeah. man. The, the amount of production that goes into these things now. Then we must press what advantage we do have. And what is that? Dragons. Send them all out. Start turning mm. green strongholds to our cause and burn those who resist. No. If dragons begin fighting dragons, we invite our own destruction. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, you guys have to be patient. Right, exactly. Greens will make the same calculation. <laughs> what are you cackling at? Perhaps it is time for you to think about secreting yourself somewhere safe. You propose to conduct the war in my absence? It, it would yeah, really no, be a precaution. You. It would be treason. Exactly. Right. A reminder. What are you saying here, man? I love how Rhaenys was just looking at everybody, just <laughs> absorbing the information. This council would do well to remember that their queen wears the crown of my grandsire, a prudent ruler whose reign outlasted every other. She would have been a great queen, man. I know! Ugh. Damn, they made such a huge mistake by skipping her. She's so smart, she's even-tempered, she thinks before acting. I would fight a hundred battles before I went into exile with none but prattling babes. Rainer were named 
uh, to drift mark. Right, they need to figure that out. The girl knows nothing of ships, nor even of dragons. There is Raina, or there is Joffrey. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta name one of them. And if there is no time, we are at war, Corlys. Right. If something were to befall you. Yeah, he almost died already. I have much to attend to. Corlys. Yeah, because she's already thinking backup plan, right? What do we do if this doesn't work? They need it. It yeah. probably struck her quite hard when they almost lost them, right? Yeah. That puts everything into perspective. It's Absolutely. like how, how fragile life can be. Yeah. It is for you to remind Lady Jane of her pledge and persuade her of the urgency of our need. So nerve wracking. They're sending her on her own, man. <laughs> These eggs are even more fragile, but should all come to ruin here, you will bear our hope for the future. Wow. Whoa. You're protecting all of that. That's a lot. Not just the dragons, yeah. That's a huge responsibility, man. Yeah. It's a different way to contribute, right, during was, this time. I was gonna say, if anything, that's also a very important role that you have right there. Protecting the future. She put a lot of trust in her. That's... I would have so much anxiety every single day. Oh, I hope they stay safe, man. I hope they can reunite. Mm. I think it is the right call, though, to, you know, keep the young... safe. Just away from this battle, because this is... It's a target at this point. This whole place. I feel sad about Jaehaerys. But I ought not to, I think. People die all the time. I feel horrible for her. I cannot imagine. The stranger comes for us all, queen and commoner. When the time comes, the time comes. Hello. I, I forgive you. What? I said that I forgive you. Wow. Oh, she needed that, huh? <sighs> she definitely needed to hear that. Yeah, and it's like the first time they actually acknowledge what happened, right? There are rumors that the king readies himself to fly to war. Mm, what is it to you? Only that I think it would benefit all of us to prevent our king from being brutally slain. And his body parts <laughs> scattered to beasts and his court come to ruin, which I not agree. Yeah, I, mean, I think we can all agree. <laughs> when you put it like that, you know? <laughs> Let's see how he's going to calm him down. Small imposition before you depart then, Your Grace. I love seeing this guy manipulate people. He's so <laughs> good at it. He's so smart. First rumors whispered on the streets of your city. Another is that his grace was outwitted by his counselors. Oh, wow. Are those actually rumors? Who spreads these lies? Hmm. <laughs> matters little. It, it matters uh, a lot, I think it man. matters. <laughs> My weeds, unless they are tended. Yes, so tend to him. Them, then. <laughs> there you go. That struck a chord. He's like, wait, my mother and my brother? Are they conspiring against me? My father always said he had no use for a master of whisperers. I find myself wanting for one. Hmm. Okay. Promotion it is. Your Grace. And you get promoted, and you get promoted, <laughs> and you get promoted. <laughs> Management is restructuring right now. <laughs> I think mayhaps I shall fly another day. Uh. Mm -hmm. and it, it does seem wise mm. on reflection. <laughs> <laughs> So Martin has a new squire that wants bedding in. He's never the woman. But you're sworn to chastity now. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh please, that's not real, man. <laughs> oh, he's serious. Oh, he's not amused. He's been doing a fantastic job the entire season, by the way. Yeah. You know, Aegon, it's great to get to know his character a little bit more. It's very interesting to see his vulnerability, but also his rage, how he can be unhinged, but also reasonable. Very complex, it's great. It's that Targaryen blood, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> it boils fast. Beautifully shot. One shot. Yeah, single take, like that. Who was your grandson? They call him the conciliator. King Jaehaerys. <laughs> Shh. I really shouldn't be telling you this. It could cost me my head. You are saying you're a Targaryen. Shh, shh, shh. A potential heir. I'm the son of Balon the Brave. Bastard brother to Prince Damon. And the late King Viserys. What? There's no way. The blood of the dragon runs through these veins, and yes, men would take my head for it. Wait, is he for real? I don't... I have a hard time believing that. I look very much like King Viserys. Look, well, you can tell by his hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> He's Robin nephew. What? Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, oh my god. Awkward. 
Drinks for all at the pleasure of the crown. Yes! Oh hell yes! <laughs> They're gonna be spending money like <laughs> a little tame, but yeah. a good place as any to get it. I guess they've got the king's blessing. I guess so. <laughs> Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did not quite expect that. Okay. Nope, just plain trumpet. Oh. That's definitely making it to YouTube. <laughs> Something like that. <gasps> oh. Oh, this is awkward. <laughs> what a fine, sweet thing. <laughs> Aegon. Don't be mean, man. She's now very much occupied. <laughs> Aegon, shut up. One oar is as good as another. <laughs> Oh, he is gonna be pissed. Oh, just keeps getting bullied, huh? Just keeps circling back to that. He's gonna snap again. So badly. Yeah. He's been patient, to be fair, with all the bullying situation. Yeah. Castle must feel empty, huh? It Kids has are to. gone. Damon's gone. No matter how messed up their situation is. Yeah, they still love each other. Yeah. You know, it's just the way they go about things are so different. And now is not the time to experiment. You know, <laughs> they have to follow a yeah. single command. Imagine how restless she must be feeling. You can't sleep well. No. You can't let your guard down. It must be constant tension. Oh, she's reading her letter. Oh, what come on. Say? Come, come on. on. A tavern with an excellent reputation on the Rosby Road, not two miles away from memory serves. We marched to make the first strike in the name of his grace. I assure you, my nephew will not begrudge me a night of comfort. Oh, dear lord. Already butting heads. We will rendezvous with your army at first light. Or if their wine is good, perhaps a little after first light. We're exposed. What? Call? Oh, shit. <gasps> oh! There's a dragon high up. Yeah! That's high. <gasps> oh, it's her. Wow. Oh, the toxic part of me is like, just burn them all. <laughs> the dragon sensed them. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Is she gonna die? Oh, no. We cannot lose another one, please. I'm loving these POV shots. Yeah, I love that, man. You feel like you're there riding. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yes. Dragon action! Oh burn him to a crisp. <laughs> burn Crispin, burn Crispin! Make him crispy, please! <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh! What a shot! Be fast! Oh. oh! Barely missed them. You guys got lucky. <laughs> it's like a horror film. <laughs> yes, I was just thinking about it, dude. Imagine you're just hiding in the trees, praying it doesn't sense you. So then! She's gonna retreat. Looks like it. They know we're abroad, they'll be hunting. And we must move under the trees and by cover of dark starting tonight. And no f***ing ends. <laughs> I love that. It's like just so you know, okay? We're gonna do what I'm what I say. Right. Lord Farring has reported a larger force moving northeast towards Rosby. Yeah. The noose is tightening. Such a great height. It was not such a great height, Your Grace. Yeah, she was really low. You said not to engage, so I didn't. Exactly. <laughs> Tis Prince Damon who ought to worry. Prince Damon has Caraxes. Right. Cole will look to increase his numbers, and he may call upon a dragon of his own. They're scared for their yeah. own safety as well. Let's root Cole out and burn him. I can understand the want, right, of yeah, taking action. Of They're getting impatient. I have heard your arguments, and will consider them. It's so hard. Everybody's telling her to fight. In her heart, she doesn't feel like that's the right thing to do. Rhaenys also right. doesn't think that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. You need to wait. They mentioned, like, Rhaenyra showed mercy. They need to exploit that. Make her look like she's the better queen compared to Aegon, who basically killed all the rat catchers. Haha, <laughs> he put his sword there. Cool. Yeah, why would they be trying to open the door at night? Right in his chambers? Why would you go 
go check out the creepy noise. Just barricade yourself in. <laughs> this guy. Well, it shows us how brave he is as a character, you know? The fact yes. that he just walks out not knowing what he, mu what he might encounter. My apologies. Yes, come on. It gives us character development. <laughs> this is good. What's going on? Always coming and going, aren't you? Who's this? Who is this? And I have to clean up afterwards. Oh. Oh, oh that's so messed up. Wow. Oh, we get to see the actual remorseful wow. side of him. He's being haunted by his own actions. Mm -hmm. He does feel guilt. Whoa. <sighs> it, is that not the, is the, 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 the tree? The tree, yeah. How did it end up here? You will die in this place. Shit. Whoa, that is eerie. What do you know of the movements of Alicent Hightower? Would you take a hostage? <laughs> uh, outright. I would speak with her myself. Hostage it is. <laughs> if war can be averted, it is my duty to avert it. Mm. I have reason to believe she may be of the same opinion. Yeah, she is. You can have a message brought to her. She would suspect some subterfuge. Oh. Mm. I must see her. Face to face. Yeah, How texting is never the way. There's always mis miscommunication <laughs> when texting. Speak face to face. She goes nowhere without many eyes watching her. What is she gonna try to sneak into? Unless. Unless what? But if I'm recognized. You may be surprised to learn it, but most folk pay no mind to a woman who has not dressed as a queen or lured herself with the eyes of men. <laughs> Perfect. Cover. <laughs> yeah. So I make my way to the Red Keep, I presume, and bring the bell. <laughs> there is one place Alicent goes outside the castle walls. Okay. I love the scheming. This is great. How do we plan to get you in there? Without anybody seeing you, just be invisible. You know, at this point, even if Rhaenyra and Alicent would talk to each other, I still think that it's too late to pull everyone else back. The domino effect is already too far I gone. I think so. Like, how are you going to stop Damon, Kristen? Aegon. Aegon. That's the thing, right? Like, there's so many moving pieces, like we were saying in the previous episode. It's it's not enough for both of them to just halt their exactly. respective teams, let's call them. <laughs> Incognito look. Love it. Oh God, imagine the stress in that moment, the anxiety. Just hoping nobody recognizes you. Must be strange to be back, huh? Yeah. After so many years. Wow, looks beautiful. But it looks very imposing, right? When you see it from <laughs> down there, what the people see day to day, there yeah. she is. But she's constantly protected. Right. How the hell is she gonna... I see. So subtle, I love that. It's gonna go with all the, the rest of the nuns. Oh, no mm. way. <gasps> Makes sense. As they're praying. Lighting a candle together. Just like the olden days. Whoa. Wow. Just so exquisite. Can't believe this is happening. I cannot believe it either. <laughs> Damn. Hmm? <laughs> no, no. I must speak with you. Holy shit. If I could cry out. Your knights would find me, I would be taken or slain. Do not before I killed you. <laughs> and then what? That's it. <laughs> That's the insurance policy. Oh, I have become badly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, face is like... We knew, even then, that men trained up for battle are eager to fight. To see blood and glory. Yep. But yeah. you are... I, 
You are different. You know better. You do not have that desire within you. So you've come to surrender then? Oh, don't oh, be a come bitch. On. Come on. My dragons are restless. They smell battle. But if you and I may come to terms. There are no terms now. She's not want to give up. She does not want to give up the throne. Your allies turn from you and they hear of your depravity. Your hands are bloody to no crime. I could never have imagined you. The trespass was not mine. Yeah, she needs to know yeah. that. I am a mother too, and you have yet to answer for the murder of my son. I right. appreciate that happened with all my heart. Yeah, of course you do. How convenient. With my rightful inheritance. Mm hmm She's like, well, your father told me in his deathbed. Yeah, right. <laughs> just, just a huge misunderstanding, man. Yeah, she just heard what she wanted to hear. Well, Viserys also kind of messed up because he didn't see that it was Alice and he was speaking to. Your father it's changed his mind. Oh, so you say. Right. Yeah, hours before I left him, he had affirmed my right to the throne. Exactly. A right he upheld steadfastly every day of his life after my mother died. Exactly. He wouldn't have not changed his mind last minute. His mind was changed in an instant. I will. Of course you will. She's delusional. My father loved me, Alison, and I believe he loved you too. She betray him at the very last. Oh. Was your plan first laid? Was your ambition so key? He changed his mind, Rhaenyra. He changed his mind. In her, from her perspective, she's telling the truth. Of course, that's what she perceived. That's what she saw. I swear this to you, on the memory of my mother. Yeah, this is such a mess, man. I've been at times unkind, but never untrue. Do you think me capable of such naked deceit? This is such a complex situation to be in. What did he say at the end? Did he speak my name? Let's clear this up. He was weary. It was hard at times to understand. Yeah, exactly. But he spoke Ekon's name. He said he was the prince that was promised to unite the realm. My father used those words. Right. He spoke to you of the Song of Ice and Fire. Mm hmm. It's a story he once told <laughs> about Egon the Conqueror. Yeah. Now she's, maybe she realizes that it was all a big misunderstanding, or maybe she's just, even if she knows, she's going to be set in her ways, isn't she? No, she's going to stay in her ways. Yeah, Allison, you f***ed up big time. There's been a mistake. There's been no mistake. Please. A terrible war is looming. And even victory may be so bloody as to be counted a loss. Yeah, it's not going to be worth it. Been no, no mistake. Yeah. There you go. I called it. My father has gone from court. Court is on the mark, Jamin. The domino effect. You know what Eamon is? Damn. It's too late, Rhaenyra. Yeah. Yes. Wow. It slipped. That opportunity to, to not go through this, isn't it? That's it. Crazy. Yeah. It was tenuous, but it was right there. The hope. But they no. both under they both understood that it was a big misunderstanding, yet they have to go through it. Through with it. Wow. What an amazing <sighs> scene. Great to see both of them on the screen together. I know. Working. I, I miss them together like this. You know, it's been a while. They bounce off of each other so well. What great chemistry and yeah. such wonderful performances, man. So subtle, yet so strong. It's all in the eyes. You see the desperation, the the anger, the the blame, the guilt, everything, and the fear of, you know, what's what's to come like when it comes to this war and it's going to be you know in a way there's something that's a bit soothing about this which is that they both know that this is going to be terrible this war there's no even if you win you're not really winning too many people will die it just sucks that Alicent I understand that she feels that it's too late for her to do anything about it for anyone to stop this wheel that's already going but uh, man I just I just wish that she bought a little bit harder to stop this to try to come to an understanding at least you know to some sort of agreement. It's it's interesting because I feel like Rhaenyra's Rhaenyra can be a bit more temperamental and I think Alicent is more proud. So mm. I feel like there's it's very hard when they're both at that level. Mm. And here we got to have them both kind of like, you know, dial it down a little bit and get to actually communicate what is happening, communicate that they don't want this. And, you know, they were basically doing the tally. OK, you did this. I did but, that. Yeah. You did this. And, and it's a difficult situation because, yeah, they both have lost family members now to this. And it's like, well, whose fault was that then? Right. Right. From Rhaenyra's perspective is like, there's always the fact that she lost a son, but the added, you know, 
wound. Yeah, but you usurped the throne as right. well. So the fact that you're not giving that up makes it seem like this was all done on purpose. Like you want to hurt me, you know, and like it's really cool that we got to see and hear like all of the inner thoughts because, you know, it's been a minute since season one. I'm glad to see that those things are still in her mind as a character where she was like in those final moments, like, was it was it you who betrayed my father? Like what happened? Because mm-hmm. she wasn't there. Right. right. You would have that doubt. I think the writing is so beautifully written and so natural. Like she comes to Allison not as, you know, a queen or a leader. Mm. She comes to her as a friend. Yeah. Uh, as as a person who once, you know, knew her very well. And she's point blank asking, you know, I need to to know right. this. I think we all would be in the same position, would need to feel at peace with that. You know, with what happened. Did he really die out of, you know, out of sickness? Right. Did you do anything? And the way that Allison replies is very, you know, you could definitely tell that she's being honest she's like i would i would never do any of that and from her perspective she is telling the truth she has never lied she has never lied it's a misunderstanding i understand you know you might feel a certain type of way about it but those were the words that viserys said and it's very easy to mis- misunderstand she did not know that those words were not meant for her you know as a person we we i think we oftentimes forget you know while watching that she was his spouse she still cared for him she took care of him for yeah. A long, long time, she would think, you know, that on his deathbed, perhaps this information was an act of love. You know, this last piece of information, this is what I truly believe. Mm. Even though I haven't been able to say this throughout all this time Mm. because of optics. Now I'm going to tell you the truth because you're my love. I think that Aegon should be king. So, you know, from Allison's perspective, it makes total sense. Like, I I understand that that's not what it is because we know we have as the audience, we have the full picture. So what I'm asking here is exactly you remove that context and it's very hard. It gets very murky where you're like, I see where Allison is coming from. From her perspective, she's just upholding Viserys' last wish Mm. up until this point, though. This point, Mm. now they understand. Rhaenyra was like, wait, wait, wait. He said those words. Yeah. He meant he got the conqueror. And you see Alice and she's taken aback. She's like, wait. And you see that face. She's like, oh, mm-hmm. I messed up. She genuinely believed it was about her Aegon. And now she knows for a fact. I'm sure there's still a little bit of doubt in her mind, but it's a very hard truth to ignore. I think it's more pride now mm. and denial than than knowing it's the truth so i think now that something changed now where they know and then she resorted to being a bit more proud again and saying you know it's too far gone whatever you gotta get the hell out of here you know and i love that dynamic like these characters feel so damn real like a yes. person it's very hard to turn a person when they're that far gone and when they're that proud and even though she probably knows that she was in the wrong. She's probably still going to hold on to, you know, what about, you know, Eamon's eye? What about this and that? And, and now recently, right, a family member died because right. of you. So she's going to hold on to all that before she will admit that she was wrong. Well, the interesting thing is, I think, uh, you know, it's easier to kind of put the other side more into the role of your opposition of your enemy, right? It's easier to process the other side as just black and white, you know what I mean? Um, that they're the enemy and that, you know, it's it, it's much more simpler than it actually is. Again, a lot of the things that are going on here to them is just a he said, she said, a, a she said, she said thing, right? Well, because like Rhaenyra is saying, she's like, I had nothing to do with the fact that they killed that little boy. And Alicent does have to absolutely take responsibility for usurping the throne. She was absolutely behind it. But the other things that happened, it was not really their own decisions. But the thing is, when you look back at season one, there was already friction between these two. You know, we need to remember that Alicent, you know, she's very self-righteous. She's very sanctimonious. So like she, once she has committed herself to a cause, she's, she sticks to it, right? Again, that can be a wonderful quality. It makes her very steadfast, very consistent and very strong. But it can also result in a situation like this where she's too proud and she holds on to that and you know we saw it early on where you know she was talking all this shit towards Rhaenyra because she hooked up with Kristen Cole and then next thing you know she's doing the same thing you know what I mean it's like it's the hypocrisy of it all I hear your point when it comes to Alicent you know thinking that that's what her husband the king Viserys said I still feel like she made a conscious decision not to ask questions where she's like well he said that he he said that you know he he wanted Aegon to be king I think she didn't I think she chose to believe that I don't think she a hundred percent is like oh my god that's what he meant I think it was more of a conscious decision to say yeah that's what he meant I'm just gonna ignore the possibility that it could be something else that it could possibly be a little bit more vague I'm just gonna make this decision and then just use that to make my son the king and I think that you know 
it's so interesting to backtrack the relationship between Rhaenyra and Alicent. It's like what, what Rhaeny said. It's like, where did it begin? You know, when you go even further back, the little friction here and there. And like, you've just, now we just see these two women completely torn apart by, by time, by circumstance, by their own decisions or the people around them. And it's honestly so sad. And like, I love that this scene really culminated all of that, all of the resentment, the misunderstandings, the mistakes, the blame that they dished to both of each other and it's it was done fantastically what a great place to leave this episode at i think it's a great way to kind of you know have a compilation of all of the events like you mentioned <laughs> right before shit hits the fan <laughs> i yes. think we needed this moment of you know because we've been feeling that it's like no they have to talk yeah you know, we had that wishful thinking of you maybe, literally said that in the episode. Right. I was I was hoping that this would happen. And, and it it was an incredible scene. And despite my wishful thinking and, yeah. and wanting them to fix it, it feels like it feels like, you know, when you're in a group of friends and then there's a, a breakup happens and oh, you're like no. the middle person, <laughs> like you have no issues with both parties <laughs> yet. You know, you're wishing that it works out and it just it's it won't. Yeah, I felt that way throughout this episode. I yeah. felt this way through. I felt that way through this scene where it's like I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing both points. They, I understand. And I love that the show is making it harder. I love the writing. I'm preferring the writing in the second season because it's they're showing us the grays now. I feel like season one was a bit more biased. I think we all know this towards a specific side. This one is really making me question like not who's right or wrong or anything like that. I think they're both both teams, like I said, have bad people and good people within them. And I love that. I love the complexities where I can root for Allison because I know how she was abused and sold by her father to yeah. do his own, you know, his own bidding. I can understand that. I can, you know, I, I connect with that. You know, I, I get Allison and who she is as a character and then they can make some, they can do something that's really messed up. And I can be like, dude, what are you doing? I disagree with that. I can love Damon for being, you know, crazy and, and being the, the, the hothead that he is sometimes. <laughs> but then when he takes it so far, I'm like, dude, it reminds us, it constantly reminds us that actions have really big consequences. And normally the people that suffer are either the common folk or someone that's innocent. And I love that, you know, not a lot of shows can bring that middle ground type of thing without feeling wishy-washy. Like they're making a stance and it's your choice as an audience to decide who you want to go with, you know, or who do you agree with? But the perspective that they give us, we, the audience have all the information. We have a very big advantage in comparison again to these characters. Mm -hmm. We are like the three-eyed raven. We see everything, right? And the fact that we know everything that the greens are going through and everything that the blacks are going through makes us, you know, it allows us to be a bit more empathetic, mm. I think, towards certain characters. It's, and again, I know that, you know, we joke around, we're like team this, team that. But mm -hmm. like in reality, I think we can all agree, like we feel very bad for certain characters on both sides. We understand, we empathize with them. That's the beauty of this writing, because I feel like in season one, it was very much the greens were kind of uh, strangers in a way. We knew they were there, but the attention was all in the blacks and we were kind of setting up this world. Now it feels like they're giving enough attention to both sides. And not only that, in three episodes, we also got to see a lot of what's outside of these walls. What's what's right. over, what's happening in the other strongholds? What's going on with those people and how they're also fighting for the same causes? And how far does this reach mm -hmm. and how they mention like certain certain people, they just they have bad blood amongst them for so mm -hmm. long. It was bound. They just needed an, an excuse. And that is also a valid, you know, it's a, it's a valid thing to happen where it's like, yeah, they just hated each other for so long. This was the, <laughs> the best, you know, this was their outlet, right? To justify why they would do such a thing. Really, really love the direction that they're taking. I mean, obviously this is based on the book, so I'm sure that book readers already know where this is all leading to. But <laughs> the fact that they, they did try to stop the ball from rolling downhill, but it was just too heavy, makes it that much more tragic. It's the flavor that we needed. Yeah. to move forth now now we can you know move along and be like they tried you know yeah. that's it we we are we've expired our options now They're like someone is gonna have to do something and or like allison said that you come to surrender and that's when i knew i was like oh shit yeah because at the end of the day it's always going to be about the throne yes yeah, sure we've lost people but that's going to be the ultimate that's the ultimatum really yeah. are you willing to give up you know, the thrown away or, you know, to Rhaenyra or are you going to hold on to it? And we know the answer to that. So ultimately, that's that's it. Yeah, I remember, you know, from when we were watching the first season, my thought was, you know, if Rhaenyra wants it, she's going to have to take it. 
by force. It's not going to be given to her. You know, both Alison and Rhaenyra are products and, uh, you know, victims of a very patriarchal society that's going on here right now, right? We hear them being talked over and ignored, even when they're in a position of power. And it's so interesting how differently they both react to that, right? Al Alison is very much, well, how do I, how do I make this work for myself? And Rhaenyra is very much the almost like punk rock, you know, like fighting against the system. Like, <laughs> oh, when they're like, oh no, we couldn't possibly have a woman that's a queen. And she's like, no, I can. I'm the rightful heir. We see how, you know, it messed up as it also is for people like Rainice, which I think it's devastating that she was not made queen. She has every single quality to be a queen. She is, like I mentioned in the episode, she's steadfast. She's very tempered. She waits. She observes. She's very, very intelligent. And she thinks of the future, even if it's going to hurt her, right? You see it in her conversations with her husband you see it in her conversations with everybody and she has just enough of that sass and that confidence that she can stand up to those even when it appears that she is at a lower or more weak place and i i think it's such a shame that you know that they skipped over her and so now we have an opportunity opportunity with rhaenyra and i have to say i'm very surprised that after the ending of season one that rhaenyra has really held she stayed her hand she did not lash out she did not she just said i want amond which is understandable she was in a deep place of grief um and it was just that spark that lit up something that it never should have right that wasn't like what damon did that was that was not what she meant <laughs> god damn it and you see the misunderstanding but again all of these misunderstandings whether it's with amond you know and vagar and what happened to luceris whether it's for Damon hearing what he heard because that's what he wanted to hear because he's a man of action. He's not a man of staying and planning and thought necessarily. Not that he's not intelligent, but he wants to get shit done. And just seeing all of these little mistakes, these little sparks just turning into a wild forest fire, having all of these consequences, it's utterly devastating. I like that you pointed that out because I think it's just, it's yet another example of how, you know, Targaryen blood runs hot. You yeah. know, it really does. And, you know, when things cool down, I love that, you know, and these characters are left on their own and they're alone at night. That's when that weight hits them. And I needed to see that from Damon. I yeah. needed to see that humanity, that that the child is gone because of me, because of my decisions, because of my my choice of words. And because that's essentially it's his responsibility at the end of the day. You know, whether or not he was the one holding the knife, he might as well be right. And I love that we get to see that humanity, that even though we're fighting for a cause and I might feel entitled to a specific result, it's still a kid that paid the price. You know, someone who had nothing to do with it. And I really like, I mean, you know, I'm not going to give out prizes for people, you know, because they feel remorseful <laughs> for something <laughs> that they've done. And that's completely horrible. So, you know, I, I'm not trying to pitch the blacks as, you know, honorable because they feel bad. I think it's horrible what they, I, I don't want to say they, I feel like a lot of people go fall into that trap where it's like, well, he's team black. Yes. But he also, you know, went against the, <laughs> the, the actual orders. So he went on his own. I would say this is a Damon action. Damon should have suffered the consequences. If, if you were to punish anybody, it should be him alone. You wouldn't just, you know, punish the entire team black for it because they really didn't want to do any thing like that, you know, to that <laughs> result. Uh, so seeing him really be haunted by his decisions and by how he manifests his impulses, I hope that he can learn from it. You know, I, I know it's late now to be <laughs> like, I hope you can become a good person. I think this is a taint that will forever be there. You know, for anybody that's looking at the character, you can, there's only so much redeeming you can do now. You know what I mean? Like you're always going to be the person responsible for such a horrible thing. But I think remorse is step one. And hopefully, you know, you can never bring back the kid or anything like that. But I feel like as a character, it makes it a bit more rich. It's not just, oh, he's a hothead and he'll do whatever it takes. No, he's a hothead. He might do whatever it takes, but then he brings that weight home and how he deals with that weight. That's the interesting part for a character. And I cannot wait to see them. You know, I hope that they can develop that in a more interesting way, in a way that allows us to connect to the character. And maybe, maybe he does end up doing something that is still rash, but perhaps against his own interest, perhaps a little bit more honorable to maybe feel like he can cleanse himself from this action. I would hope for that character development. I think Damon is an excellent character, an entertaining character to watch. Obviously not a good person. I'm just saying he's a great character to uh, to to just, you know, see. This was a great episode, guys. What are your thoughts on the episode? Let us know down below. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe. And as always, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. See ya.